Well, Mr Speaker, I thank the Secretary of State for advance sight of her statement and for the continued briefing that she continues to give me on Privy Council terms. We have all been inspired by the gallant and tenacious actions of Ukrainians in defence of their country. This is true courage under fire. President Zelensky has epitomised the bravery, the dignity and resolve of a nation fighting back, fighting for values that we all share, for democracy, for freedom and for the rule of law. The Foreign Secretary is right when she says that Putin's invasion is not so far going to plan. But will she agree with me that we must not let our focus slip for even a second? We will continue to stand united with our allies and partners, supporting Ukraine and opposing this outrageous campaign of aggression. Mr Speaker, this morning I had the honour of meeting with Ukraine's Ambassador with the Shadow Defence Secretary. He thanked all sides of this House for the united opposition that we have shown to Vladimir Putin's illegal war and the support we continue to show for Ukrainian sovereignty. Putin is not only facing a united West, he is facing a truly united kingdom. Together, we have enacted sanctions that are having a strong effect. The ruble has crashed by over 40%. The main borrowing rate is up 20%, and inflation is reportedly hitting around 65% per year. Oligarchs are being frozen out of their bank accounts, and the Central Bank of Russia is being blocked from part of the 640 billion war chest that it holds in foreign reserves. Labour's priority is to cut off Putin's rogue state from our economic system and to undermine his campaign of aggression in Ukraine. Mr Speaker, we recognise that on the 24th of February, the European security order changed. Our continent faces a transformed strategic context. Our world is at the start of a new era. I pay tribute to the political courage shown by all of our partners, particularly our allies in Germany, who have recognised that by taking the difficult and brave decisions to provide Ukraine with lethal weapons for its fight and to commit to the significant increases in defence spending that this new reality demands. Yesterday, President Putin raised the alert level of Russian nuclear forces. Mr Speaker, as the five nuclear weapons states, including Russia, reaffirmed in January, a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. Can I ask for her assessment of this decision, given the understandable concern it will have caused amongst the public? Turning to sanctions, we welcome the further steps the Government has announced today. The progress made by the UK, the EU and the US on cutting off Russian banks from SWIFT is something Labour has called for for some time. The moves to finally clamp down on dirty money, so long demanded by Labour and colleagues across the House, are long overdue. It's regrettable that it's taken this long and a crisis of this nature for action, but we welcome the steps and will study them carefully. But there's still more the Government can do. The last time I stood at this dispatch box, I asked what steps the government has taken to ensure members of Russia's legislature, the Duma, can be sanctioned. Still today, I'm waiting for that answer. <coughs> Similarly, while I welcome the Foreign Secretary's action against Russia's financial sector, the government should go further to ensure sanctions can be placed against Russia's extractive industries, energy industries and technological industries. And we believe that we must ensure that the insurance industry cannot underwrite and de-risk Putin's war. As I said during last, the, my last time at the dispatch box, it's vital that these sanctions are broad enough to inflict damage on every aspect of Russia's economy. We welcome the moves that the government have taken to ensure Russia is cut out of the SWIFT banking system, but can the Foreign Secretary explain the dialogue that she's had with our allies about cutting the country out of the Visa MasterCard system too? 
Finally, can the Foreign Secretary give assurances that Putin will also feel the consequences of his despicable actions in terms of international opportunities available to the country in sports and culture? The diplomatic unity of the West is crucial, but we must also widen the global coalition opposing the war. I pay tribute to the political courage shown by our partners, particularly our allies Germany, who recognise this. But difficult and brave decisions also require further action. Some countries like Kenya have spoken out with clarity and elegance about Putin's imperialism, but others have stayed silent. Some are even allies of the UK and fellow democracies. So can I ask what steps the Foreign Secretary has taken to ensure that the widest possible range of voices speaks up in opposition to this war? Mr Speaker, as well as commending the bravery of the Ukrainians demanding their country, we must also praise the courage of ordinary Russians taking to the streets of Moscow in St Petersburg and beyond, under the threat of repression to show their opposition to this despot. Mr Speaker, this is the fifth day of fighting. Ukraine is still facing uh, an all-out war from Putin's army. It's a mark of the bravery of Ukraine's forces that neither Kiev nor Kharkiv have fallen. We salute their courage, and this whole House will continue to stand with them. Yeah. Yeah.